All right, good morning, everybody. This is Wes Murdoch, Director of Training and Development for AgriDrive. Welcome to our webinar this morning. We're going to focus a little bit on spreader cleanout and inspection during the off season. We're not using that equipment. And then just seasonal bin checks as well during this time frame. I'm uh, going to give a little background and quality as well during this to kind of focus on why we utilize the gravity grain spreader from AgriDrive. Well, I appreciate everybody joining us through the audio conference this morning. Just want to quick mention that discounts are available now. Uh, contact 1855AgriDry or contact your local sales representative. If you don't know who that is, you can definitely call the office or visit AgriDryLLC.com. So AgriDry offers grain quality control solutions. So inherent in that term solutions is that there are problems. So when we look at the AgriDry products, we have problem solvers. So first off, we offer the AgriDry Seaflow Dryer Controller, the AgriDry Gravity Grain Spreader, which we're going to discuss a little bit more in depth today, and then the AgriDry Bullseye Grain Temperature Moisture Controller. Remember, problem solvers. So the AgriDry Performance Statement, we know how to manage grain moisture and fines in FM. We have time-tested and established solutions, and we are absolutely not practicing. Eli Troyer has given us proven steps to success. So when we look at our key points in maintaining long-term grain quality, those of you who have attended my customer training seminars across the country have, have kind of went in depth on both of these points. Today we're going to kind of look at air always taking the path of least resistance. But controlling the temperature of all the grain in the bin, that's really what we look at when we have that uniform airflow. We're, we're looking at the utilization of the bullseye controller. But today let's focus on air always takes the path of least resistance. So we have that big core of fines in the center. When we're talking about grain and fines, think about wrapping a piece of paper around a rock. And if you were to throw that rock, that piece of paper would fall off in the center. The rock would then go farther and go to the outside. This is the same concept with fines and grain. The fine is lighter, so the fines are going to stay in that center from the fill system. The grain is going to go to the outside. So when we look, air always takes the path of least resistance. That airflow is going to avoid that center core. So we're going to get out of condition on that top center because that's going to be the last thing to get in the airflow. So let's say, as a management practice, we try to mitigate that by pulling that center core out. So on the right-hand side, air always follows the path of least resistance. Again, goes straight up that center. Okay, so the outside top is the part, parts that are going to get out of condition. You know, it's the last thing that's going to get that airflow. So really what we want to see and why we utilize the AgriDry Gravity Grain Spreader is to uniformly distribute all those fines throughout the whole grain mass. We're getting that good uniform airflow, and we're going to basically spread all those fines throughout the grain. So we're selling those fines with the grain. We don't have to core. We don't have to blend. We're not going to have those problems with hot spots. Because remember, air always follows the path of least resistance. Okay, so with the AgriDry Gravity Grain Spreader, which we're going to discuss a little bit more today, this is going to be the 4-3000 model. So this is the demo unit. A lot of you have seen at the shows. Uh, different dealerships have them on their floors as well. This is the smallest one. This is going to be for 15 to 21 foot in diameter and up to 4,000 bushels an hour. A lot of you, especially in the Midwest, have more, uh, more capacity, larger spreaders. But we're, we basically have a spreader for any, any application up to 40,000 bushel an hour. Uh, any diameter, any bushel per hour, any fill system, we're going to have a spreader available for it. So we're good looking for that good uniform spread to avoid situations like this. You know, when we have that big tower of fines and we're dealing with problems with temperature controls, stuff like that, when we don't control that temperature, this is what we're going to get. So getting into the, the pre-harvest checkup side of things and, and really looking out what we need to do with that spreader before harvest, uh, we want to look and make sure there's no damage to any of the spreader parts. The spreader is still properly hanging. All the shoots are still at the correct angle. We're cleaned out from harvest and the leveling band and shoots are properly empty from grain or FM. So it's a good check to do pre-harvest. And this time of year, since the bin is full, gives us the opportunity to see everything really closely. What we're looking for, this is a shot from down below on top of the grain up. We're looking for that leveling band to be cleaned out. We want to inspect all the shoots, make sure the hopper's in good shape. Then we can go up to the top. And if that, that leveling band does need cleaned out, we can then inspect the preset tabs going down the chute, clean out any of that FM or grains that could possibly be caught in that leveling bin. Make sure on the top side of things that the hopper is all cleaned out, there's no obstructions coming down into the leveling bin, 
and also a good time to check level on those cross members up here. This is an example of a clogged hopper. So if we were going to check that, what we'd want to do is make sure everything was cleaned out. This is a moldy grain. This is after years and years of neglect and misuse, not cleaning stuff out, not doing that pre-harvest check. We want to focus on, on getting all that stuff cleaned out every year from the top side and checking level just to make sure everything's okay. This is an example. The, the biggest issue we run into, you can see the top white knob right here at the top of your screen. That's all the way down. So that means the leveling band down below here, full of grain, is all the way down to the cone. So nothing can evacuate that leveling band. It's going to stay that way. So let's say we had a drippy roof and we didn't clean that leveling band out. That could become moldy grain and, and stay in there and eventually uh, get to the point where we get a clogged leveling band. This is one after years and years of, of abuse and not, not getting that clean out every year. And, and it can cause a problem with the fill system and, and eventually back up, if possible, uh, into the fill system. And we don't want to have something like that happen. So it's important to get up there and clean stuff out. Uh, this is an example of, let's say, after years of abuse as well, and the leveling band, as you see, was all the way down. So this guy had this spreader for seven years and never cleaned anything out, left that leveling band all the way down, which is set that way during shipping so we don't have any damage. So and it was installed that way. Uh, the customer never cleaned it out. So you can see the FM built up on the chutes. It's just the spreader would not perform it at any good level at this point. So we need to get that stuff cleaned out. You never know what kind of prize you're going to find when you do clean a leveling band out. This was caught in our AgriDry Enhanced Service Agreement. Uh, last year, we basically had the opportunity to get up there and actually see the spreader and check everything out and clean the leveling band out and found a DeWalt 18 volt battery in there. So never know what kind of prizes you're going to find if you do go up and do the required maintenance on your equipment. I use this picture as an example. We want to check all these preset tabs coming down the chute. And you can see, especially on this one right here and this one right here, there's a small black line made by, the sh made by a Sharpie from the factory. If those are still uh, visible on your spreader when you go up and do your bin checks, and it's something you could see if you want to just clean out those tabs really quick and, and put them back to those preset lines made by the Sharpie from the factory, it's a great idea. If you don't see those lines or have problems getting them back, we do have some measurements that we can provide from the factory to give you in order to, to get those back to factory settings. But it's important to check out these tabs when you're up there to make sure everything's cleaned out, there's no cobs, uh, stocks, anything stuck in there that would cause an obstruction and reduce the performance of your spreader. So when we're up here, we're looking at uh, kind of what the spreader did last year. You see this is a 60-foot diameter bin. You can see it's pretty much bolt line to bolt line. I think this bin was 11 rings tall, something like that, 44-inch sheets. Uh, you're looking for how that spreader performed last year to, to know what kind of adjustments you might possibly have to make the next year. Uh, make sure that the chutes didn't uh, hit the roof like hit right here. You can see we've got the, the required clearance so we don't hit the roof structure. Uh, but check that bolt line to make sure that we're not going to uh, have to make any different adjustments next year. Uh, it just gives you an indication of what we're going to have to do. Uh, here's the other side of that bin. Um, I use this picture as an example to when we're up here, we're checking the spreader out. We're doing our required maintenance and cleaning. Uh, you want to check the bin, and, and it comes down to you know, you guys know what grain, good grain smells like, good, uh, bad grain smells like. You want to get up there and just look, you know, see, feel, touch, smell, kind of focus on, on everything you need to know about grain quality right now. You can see in this picture right here, we've got a little bit of grain growing right there, a little bit of corn sprouted on top. Uh, that tells me that we, we need to get some fan runtime. We need to watch our temperatures. We need to focus on what's going on. But, uh, you know, if we wouldn't have done an inspection on this bin, we might not have caught that. And, and caused a bigger problem later, have to have the field scout come up and take a look at next year's crop in the top of the bin. So we really want to focus on, on uh, doing our bin checks this time of year and, and just making sure everything's functioning correctly. So here's an example of a 16-5000 model in a 48-foot diameter bin running with a 13-inch auger. So we're going to be uh, spin in here about one to two revolutions a minute, all rotated by the gravity of the grain coming down the chutes. You can see all the preset tabs coming down that chute. Everything's cleaned out. Everything's set to go. Uh, leveling band is properly overflowing but still has enough coming under it, which we'll see right when this chute rotates around. Coming out down the chutes, everything looks real good. 
Remember, we do make a spreader for pretty much any application you're dealing with up to 40,000 bushel an hour in the commercial units. Now remember, in the, some of the commercial units, if you have a stir rate or shivers, the spreader will not rotate. Uh, call your local AgriDry representative or call the office for any additional questions. So when we're looking at these spreaders, where's the ROI? Where's the ROI on the, the total AgriDry grain quality control solutions package? Well, it's in the shrink and it's in the fines. My little package of money is in the shrink and the fines. So just an example, here's a 114-foot diameter soybean bin that we recently worked with. Uh, prior to the spreader, they were coring as high as 15 to 18 percent fines with pods up to three foot thick stuck to the sidewall. After the spreader, we completely eliminated the need to core and blend. We had uniform fines and forms throughout the whole bin, pods buried, easier to clean out. We didn't have the, the to unload system clogging because of those pods. It, it just went really well for this customer, extremely happy. Uh, here's a 78 diameter corn bin. Uh, before, you used to have to fill with uh, rail cars until the fines got too high and then switch to a cleaner to bring them within limits. After the spreader, doesn't have to use that cleaner anymore, and they're coming out with that uniform FM. So remember, this pre-harvest checkup applies to the controller as well. If you guys don't want to have, have to do this, we do have the AgriDry Enhanced Service Agreement, which would cover your spreader and your controller. The great thing about it is it does do that one courtesy stop so we can take a look at them and make sure all the equipment's functioning, get it back in operation. Uh, any stop or during the stop at any point, uh, we'll answer any questions that you have, unlimited tech support over the phone. The great thing about it is it is eligible for a 5% discount off of new equipment or upgrades to existing equipment. Uh, on the controller side of things, if for those of you who do have the bullseye controller, uh, it does include a one full year of AD Link subscription for free. That's a $200 value included in this plan. So when we're looking at all of the AgriDry grain quality control solutions, we've got to remember we're, we're going to have those high moisture areas up on top from moisture migration. We want to get rid of those. We want to get rid of that big core of fines in the center, the potential hot spots, the non-uniform moisture content going up the bin, you know, that non-uniform airflow. You know, if we try to pull out that core to, to mitigate that problem, we're still going to have those potential hot spots on the side. We're still guessing when to run our fans, so we're going to get that non-uniform moisture content up the, all the way up the bin. So with the bullseye controller and the AgriDry gravity grain spreader, we're going to control the temperature of the bin, control the moisture going into that bin, taking the guesswork out of running the fans. We're going to load the bin properly with the AgriDry gravity grain spreader so we can uh, uniformly distribute all those fines and get that good uniform airflow that makes the controller work a lot better so we're not fighting that big core in the center. Uh, just have that good uh, uniform temperature, moisture, and uniform distribution of fines. So got to remember, there's still money in those grain bins. I know it's not, not as much as it used to be in previous years, but they're still there. You know, if you uh, want to take advantage of the grain quality control products that AgriDry offers, we really need to focus on that because we don't want to back into a problem. We always have to watch where we're going, don't want to drive headlong into a ditch, or cut our nose off to spite our face. Remember, here at AgriDry, we offer grain quality control solutions, and any questions, don't ever hesitate to contact the office at 1-855-AgriDry, or your local territory representative, or utilize agridryllc.com. Uh, the home page has a lot of good information, including some upcoming webinars. Uh, the next one in this series is going to be on freezing grains. We're going to discuss a little bit about what the bullseye controller can do for you. And just a quick mention, today, uh, myself and Clint Walker, our installation manager, are going to be at the Grossenberg Implement John Deere Days Open House in Hardington, Nebraska. So if you guys are in northeastern Nebraska, uh, don't, uh, don't stop or make sure you stop and, and give us a, a quick hi. So any questions, contact the office. Um, I've been, I've been Wes Murdoch, uh, the Director of Training and Development. And uh, remember, AgriDry is often imitated and never duplicated. Any questions, give us a call. Thanks for your time today, and this will conclude our webinar.